Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for The Daily Blob, where every day we ask the question, AI, what is it good for? Is it actually good for something? And I think this is a, an interesting use case for artificial intelligence that might in fact be useful for trying to deploy into your systems. Uh, so one of the curious things I've seen with artificial intelligence is a lot of people that I know uh, that use AI and actually are building companies with AI, one of the big things that they say is that they do not use artificial intelligence uh, for actually making decisions. Like making decisions, they say AI can just be quirky as hell. And so that's probably not something you want it to do, right? The idea that you are going to have your executive assistant replaced with an AI agent is just something from what I've found, the people that are actually working with AI are a little bit nervous about that concept. But they're out there, they're trying to figure out real uses, real valuable uses for artificial intelligence. And one of the things that, that I've heard a lot of people talk about that AI is used for, useful for is basically the process of auditing things, like going through, looking at records that a human being uh, actually created uh, and verifying that they were created properly. Uh, when a human being has to, uh, let's let's say take a look at handwritten notes let's say from a doctor and has to put that information into a form uh, basically making sure that the, the information in the form actually matches uh, the information that is in the document and there might not actually be some other things to pull out the idea being is that you have the AI kind of looking over the shoulder of the employee uh, basically bringing things to light flagging things that might be important for the employee to do. And then the employee uh, is part of the decision loop and then decides whether that thing that was flagged uh, should be followed up on uh, or basically that, or should it be dismissed. So the idea isn't that the AI is making the decisions, the AI is flagging thing for th flagging things for the actual employee uh, to make the decisions. If you take that a bit farther, uh, we get this with Google DeepMind. Uh, Google says it's AI-based bug hunter found 20 security vulnerabilities. Uh, so there are open source packages out there. And there's this whole idea with open source packages that obviously they're more secure than proprietary software because they're open source. Eli, obviously they're more secure because anybody can look at the code. And what you find when you've been in this world for a while, it's like just because anybody in the world can look at the code doesn't mean anybody has actually looked at the code. Uh, the other thing to be thinking about, especially when you're dealing with systems, is there's so much integration, there's so many dependencies and that type of deal. Even for the, the most rock star ninja programmer out there, there might be vulnerabilities in these systems just because they missed something, right? Their code works perfectly, but if you're connecting to a whole bunch of different dependencies, maybe how you communicate with this dependency in this particular way, right? Maybe, maybe there's a little bit of a vulnerability there. And so what Google is saying is they have an AI based bug hunting tool that can go in and look at this open source software to try to find problems that the original programmers and everybody else may not have found, which actually, dare I say it, might be a very valuable use of artificial intelligence. <clears throat> Is it worth $400 billion in CapEx expenses in the next year? No. It is still not worth $400 billion in CapEx expenses. But it has value. This is my whole problem with the whole AI world. Like, people think I'm just mean. They think I'm just mean about AI. And I'm like, no, there's a lot of cool shit about AI. There's a lot of valuable stuff about AI. Is, is it worth $400 billion in a single year of CapEx? No. Anywho, uh, coming from TechCrunch, Google's AI-powered bug hunter has just reported, reported its first batch of security vulnerabilities. Uh, Heather Adkins, Google's vice president of security, announced Monday that its LLM-based vulnerability researcher, Big Sleep, found and reported 20 flaws in various popular open source software. Adkins said that Big Sleep, which is developed by the company's AI department, uh, DeepMind, as well as its elite team of hackers, Project Zero, reported its first ever vulnerabilities, mostly in open source 
software such as audio and video library FFmpeg. So if you know what FFmpeg, that's kind of interesting, right? FFmpeg is so used. That is a that is a major uh, uh, library for basically encoding uh, audio and video files. And the fact that the AI was able to find a vulnerability in 2025, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, an image editing suite, uh, Image uh, Magic. Given that the vulnerabilities are not yet fixed, we don't have details of their Im impact or severity, as Google does not uh, yet want to provide details, which is a standard policy when waiting for bugs to be fixed. Quote, to ensure high quality and actionable reports, we have a human export in the loop before reporting. But each vulnerability was found and reproduced by the AI agent without human intervention, Google spokesperson Kimberly Samara told TechCrunch. Uh, Royal Hansen, Google's vice president of engineering, uh, wrote on X that the findings demonstrate, quote, a new frontier in automated vulnerability discovery, uh, which is actually uh, probably true. And so this is an interesting concept is you think of, you think about like, what is the actual power of AI, right? Get, <sighs> Ignore Sam Altman for a moment. Ignore and ignore all the dingbats for a moment. And, and let's start. Let's start actually thinking about what what are the real value sets. What are the real resources that artificial intelligence uh, brings to bear uh, within your systems? One of the things that can be seen with artificial intelligence, one of the values there, is that once you allocate the resources for AI, basically the idea being is that it can simply run 24/7. This is one of the things that you should be thinking about. You know, I talk about this whole thing with AI. AI models uh, and AI resources. And so when you use like ChatGPT and GPT-5 is about to come out soon, right? It's, it's very quick and it's very high quality. But one of the things I ask you folks is for the cost of those resources, is that something that you actually need? So like if you use um, uh, OpenAI's uh, API, uh, you, can, you can send images uh, to OpenAI and you can get descriptions of the images and you can get tags. And you, can, you can find out a whole bunch of stuff about those images and it will do it really quickly. But it costs money. It costs, I think it's like four cents. It costs an amount of money in order to do it, right? And if you look at scale, if you're talking about running the next Instagram or something like that, you're talking about millions or possibly billions of, of images, right? That can get expensive really quickly. Well, one of the things to, to think about though is you're getting speed. So not only are you getting the, the response back, but you're also getting a speed of response back uh, from OpenAI. What if you created your own systems uh, that might be slower, that might be slower, and they just tick through, and they 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they're doing their thing. So let's say uh, instead of an image being processed in one second using OpenAI, let's say it takes, I don't know, 10 seconds uh, using local uh, infrastructure that you've created. Well, here's the thing, as people submit images into your system, you know, it'll do the first one, it'll take 10 seconds, and then it does the next one, and then it does the next one. So it'll be able to do six images uh, in a minute, right? It'll be able to do 60 images uh, every 10 minutes. Um, oh, I don't know. You do 60, you'll be able to do 360 images every hour. Is that right? About 360 images every hour. And then multiply that by 24 and you get, you know, you get uh, quite a lot, 8,000, something like, like 8,000 images a day. Right, so if you're if you're creating a system that is not the, like like the, the the time the speed isn't the biggest priority, uh, then you know being able to process you know seven eight thousand images per day might be fine. And I think that's a con uh, thing to be thinking about, like with with the the whole cybersecurity thing and having AI dealing with uh, cybersecurity, especially auditing within your systems. The idea that is just constantly running in the background. It's constantly looking at files. It's constantly like running, um, oh, what is it? 
Nmap, running things like Nmap or whatever tools to constantly be bringing in information from that information that's constantly being brought in, looking at that information from that going through certain routines. Oh, okay, here, here is a new MAC address that has been discovered on the network. Let us do a port sweep of uh, the ports uh, on, the, the, on the IP address that's associated with that particular MAC address. Okay, we get the, these ports back. All of these ports are open. Okay, what are the possible vulnerabilities abilities uh, that can be used against those ports and then you just have this AI system and it's just constantly hammering all of the stuff in your infrastructure continually looking for vulnerabilities and therefore if you have a system Maybe you have a system that only pops on the network uh, like one hour uh, every week or so, every two weeks. Like something you think about with nation state actors, this whole idea of how, how do you compromise systems that will not be detected as compromised? What if you compromise a salesperson system, right? So let's say you have a true remote salesperson. This remote salesperson travels all over the world, right? So as, as they're going through border control one day, the border control agents say their computer and needs a special inspection. The special inspection, you know, puts a little bit of soft, additional software onto their system. They then go back to their headquarters office. They open the computer at their headquarters office because they're there to, to meet somebody that day, meet an executive or whatever to discuss about, about sales plans. They're now on the internal network for not that long. They're not going to be on the internal network for eight hours a day, for five days a week or whatever. They're going to be on that internal network for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Half, right? If you have a human person uh, trying to spot what the hell's going on, you may not spot that there is an issue with this particular computer. If, on the other hand, you have AI just constantly processing in the background, looking for vulnerabilities, looking for new things that come in, maybe even within that small one hour window, it will be able to detect the issue with that particular system and be able to do something with it. Uh, again, thinking about things like uh, uh, software packages, right? Open source is a big deal right now. It's interesting being a uh, Gen Xer, Gen X, it's called Gen X. Learn it. <laughs> Learn it, you fucking kids. It's called Gen X. Anyways, being a Gen Xer, one of the interesting things with open source, and one of my problems, my, honestly, my problem mentally when I think about open source is I think about open source as in Linux, right? Linux, Apache, Squid, uh, Open Office, those types of things. When I dealt with open source, 20 years ago, open source were complete products, right? So the idea was, if you're going to put an open source product into your environment, how do you secure it, right? And that's where you have uh, you have firewall rules and you have all kinds of other things to try to secure any kind of open source product in case it has problems. One of the interesting things nowadays, though, when you start looking at open source, you're talking about modules, like individual modules in a Python program, right? Or individual packages in a node program, right? So you might have a coder, you might have coders out there, you know, for your company, and they're implementing all of these different packages. You, as a CIO, CTO, may not even know the packages that are being fully implemented within your systems, and beyond that, you just really don't understand what vulnerabilities might be there. Having some kind of AI system constantly going through, looking at modules, looking at packages, looking at these different things where there might be a potential vulnerabilities could be incredibly valuable. Uh, we saw this Oh, back when the Russian war started, right? When Russia decided they were going to kick the shit out of Ukraine, uh, you, you had this uh, this hacktivist, and literally what the hacktivist did, I think it was a, with a Python module. I could be wrong. I think it was Python. Basically, <laughs> he updated his Python module. So this module had been around for years, right? He was a he was a trusted uh, contributor to the open source community. He had had this project for years. This project had been used on in many just just countless systems out there. Well, he decided that he really disliked Russia. So what he did is he came out with an update uh, for his particular open source module. Uh, and in that update, he added code to check on the external IP address of the server that the module is running on. And basically, if the server is inside of Russia, then to wipe the server. <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> that was real. Anywho, have I told you about layers of security? <laughs> Backups? 
Anywho, uh, but that was a real thing, right? But, but one of the, the, the curious things to be thinking about, right? It's funny to laugh at. It's funny to laugh at the stupid dumbasses that got their servers wiped, right? Those NGOs that were trying to help poor people in Russia, their servers got wiped. All these servers got wiped. People that just have to be going through a Russian IP address for some reason, they got their servers wiped. Basically, databases that, that incorrectly uh, pointed an IP address to be inside Russia when it wasn't. They got their servers wiped. But here's one of the things to be thinking about, right? When you, when, when you go and update, right? You're going through and I say, hey, you should update your whatever. How, how much do you audit those updates? You may have audited to high hell and back the original implementation. But if you're just told, told there's a new tweak or a new update, how well is that actually audited? And the curious thing is if you had some kind of AI system, it might be able to see problems well before anybody else even thinks that there's a problem, right? It goes through, it takes a look at the module, tries to fi basically figures out what the module is supposed to do, and then simply asks the question, why the hell, I think it was an image module, why the hell is this module that's supposed to be compressing images asking for your external IP address? Right, imagine if you just got that flagged. Like, hey, hey, this module that you just added is asking for your external IP address for some reason. Uh, again, from an, uh, from an AI from a AI and security standpoint, it's also an interesting thing, like uh, just simply having a summary of what a module does, right? You go to VNV, uh, you, you install, you know, PIP3 install or whatever, you install a module uh, into your virtual environment. What if, what if the AI literally looks at all the code of the module, looks at what the documentation says the module is supposed to do, and says the code in the module, this is a summary of what the code does, and then it flags things to say, these are things that it does that doesn't match the description. And to be clear, you do what you want to do. It's not that the AI takes over the job, the AI is flagging things of your concern. Uh, I think this is actually absolutely a fabulous use of artificial intelligence. So there you go. I'm not always mean about AI. <laughs> I will say it's still not worth $400 billion. I mean, it's worth some money. It's just not worth that much money. Anywho, so what do you think about this? What do you think about using AI to audit your systems from a security standpoint? What do you think about starting to focus on AI simply based off of the resources that it provides and then thinking about how you can use those particular resources uh, within your systems uh, to improve security and the rest of things like that. Uh, put your thoughts uh, down below. Give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a moron. Remember, it's Modern World of YouTube. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's an interaction. Do remember SiliconDojo.com. We are having the CTO and co-founder of an integrations company come on the show tomorrow, actually. Uh, we're gonna be doing a fireside chat, so we're gonna be talking about him trying to implement artificial intelligence into their systems and how well that did or did not work. Uh, next week, we're gonna have the VP for IBM Models. He's gonna be on. We're gonna be talking about what IBM is doing in the AI space and their uh, their models and that type of deal. Uh, you can go to silicondojo.com. You can RSVP for the fireside chat. Basically, it's a Zoom call, so you can ask questions, that type of deal. That's all I got. So with that, see you later.